Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We are going to start the remaining states. Okay. Uh, proposal types and forms. What are the proposal types? We have many proposal types and forms. So types like we have qualification of proposal and commercial bid proposal. So what is this actually qualification proposal? They also say that this request for qualification. Although they, they also call it as RFQ. That is request. Request for qualification. So what is this request for qualification? Actually, it is a step-by-step -step process. Actually, it's a formal processing method of proc of procuring uh, products or services. For example, like government agencies, we have uh, taking uh, some contract. It is typically a screening step. It is a screening step. It is a screening step to find out who is eligible, qualified, eligible uh, to submit the responses or proposal. So it is a two-step process. It will describe the company. It will describe the company or individual uh, qualifications to perform the supply. So it is a two-step process. Two-step like individuals qualification, qualification like individual general qualification also about the company or about company or about company to so like how you like service talks about service, supply, product. But it will not include price, no price, no price, details. Okay. Then commercial bid proposal, it is a commercial uh, bid proposal. It is uh, actually, it talks about um, how the vendor submits a state or, uh, to a government agency to offer a product or service or particular job. So it is the vendor, vendor supplies the uh, proposal, he submits the proposal to the government, to the government. agency to offer them the product or service to offer them the product or service it's very very important then we have other forms like letter proposals preliminary proposals detailed proposals and presentation okay what is this letter proposal letter proposal actually it is a, a type of a business letter it is a type of a business letter Okay, it is used to introduce someone your ideas, to introduce your ideas, okay. Then it can also be a sales letter, even it can also be a sales letter. Like giving promotion to your products, giving promotion to your promotion, promotion to your products, services, to the customer, to the customer. Then also, a letter suggesting a new company program to the boss, something like that. Okay. Then what is preliminary proposals? Preliminary proposal is a brief document. So it is a document. It is a document. It talks about actually and the main purposes like how it creates interest. Very, very important. How it creates interest for the future projects. For the future projects. Like um, for, for how, whether it is feasible, with the feasibility, and also the preliminary review, it discusses about these um, uh, factors, reviews, then f uh, then future feasibility. Okay, about the agency, all this talks about this uh, preliminary proposals. Then detailed proposals also it's just like a detailed description of activities involved in the project. So it discusses about detailed activities. Yeah activities it's a formal way of proposing and before and after the project begins so it is formal way of proposing before and after the project begins okay then presentation presentation is a speech it is a speech it is a speech or talk about the new product new idea it's a new idea explain in the form of a PowerPoint presentation, PPT presentation, something like that. Then, how to write a proposal? So, how to write a proposal? Proposal writing. It talks about uh, typical bid proposal uh, sections. So, we have uh, three sections like technical section, management section, cross section. Okay, what is this technical uh, bid actually? What is this technical bid? Technical bid speaks that everything except money. It talks about everything except money okay 
So it, it covers detailed specifications about the product. It talks about the product, then testing, then guarantee, then uh, warranty, okay, then penalty, what is the penalty terms. So all these details are there. So it is uh, open only for technically accepted offers for final processing. So actually it talks about, uh, it's open only for the technically accepted offers. So it's open for technically accepted offers. So this is uh, actually mainly done by the technical section. So they have this idea about specification details, all these details about the product specification, what are the details about um, warranty, guarantee, then specification of the product, all these details are given. And here, uh, the management section, you have a manager. In management section, you have a manager who's a bid manager. So he's, a, he's an executive, say, he has a role like executive sales within the organization. And he's responsible, generally in response to the request. He's responsible, he's responsible. In request for the RFP. RFP means that is request for proposal. Request for proposal from customers. So he is uh, uh, in charge for this um, management section, manager. Then we have a cost section. Cost section is related to all the cost for the project. So it talks about like a contractor will be paid, a contractor will be paid for actual quantities of work performed, then verified by the consultant. So all these details uh, include like contractor details, Mm, yeah, contractor details. Then also talks about the consultants. Then there were owner, owner representative. Okay, so this all talks about the cost of bidding the proposal in the, in the typical bid proposal section. Then we have a group. Next is group writing. So they have two things like proposal plan and story writing. So this proposal plan actually it is requires to understand a couple of mechanics like for example familiarizing yourself to a couple of proposals like you should know about uh, templates you should know about templates uh, in document templates in document then you should know how to increase your knowledge how to increase your knowledge increase your knowledge then also like shows about uh, the business proposal templates, templates like business proposal templates. So it talks about uh, infra, I mean structure, structure, and talks about formatting the letter. So all these are in proposal plan. So you should have a clear cut idea how to write a proposal plan. That is very important. Then we have, um, I think, uh, how to say, story. Storyboard, yeah, storyboard is very important as a very, very important part of the pre-production uh, process because it clearly conveys how it conveys how the project flows. Okay, and it, you can you can see how your your you work together with your employees. It allows you to see the potential problem. Very very important. It allows you to to foresee the potential problems, which are which, are, which, are, which will be like it will go without that it will go unnoticed so it will go without that it will go without it without this it will go unnoticed very 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 important so it ultimately saves money and time so that's story boring okay next project scheduling activities what is project scheduling activities so actually it talks about that um, uh, WBS, then it talks about WBS, work breakdown schedule, then it talks about estimate the future of, I mean, I mean duration of task, it talks about duration of task, estimates the duration of task, means time, important time, it identifies the milestone, milestone is the significant point, it is the significant point in development. Okay, so it is the important point in the development. Then it understands the relationship between the understands the relationship between the tasks. So the task task is an essential piece of work that serves as a means to differentiate various 
components. So it actually, it, uh, it is a various, it's a small piece of job, uh, just um, small piece of job. It serves as a means to the various components, the various components of a project. It can be again break, in, uh, break down to various assignments. So this is task. Then identify the critical path. So what is this critical path? An acceleration of method. Critical path is the uh, specific task that can be completed on time. Specific task. A specific sequence of tasks that must be completed on time. Deadline. So it's like a deadline. Okay. Then critical path actually it, uh, can only begin after the previous task and the critical path is complete. So it should have a starting point and an ending point, start and end point. So this uh, task, uh, the critical path can begin only after the previous task and the critical path is complete. Okay. So we have accelerating methods like, what are the accelerating methods? Accelerating methods like uh, you have like over, working over time, over time. Then shift, it talks about new shifts, then additional labor, additional labor. Then it talks about um, resources like resources, resources like I uh, have a um, plant, equipment, then all these details, exciting methods, make a project in a very uh, smooth manner. Then to develop alternatives, alternatives means a choice, you have a choice, you have a choice, you have a choice between two, you have a choice between two, yes, either one choose which is the best one, you develop that one. So that, uh, like it is, um, to make the project in a very smooth manner, you have to choose either one. See, break, work breakdown structure, WBS is a work breakdown structure. And this we have a very important thing. Here we have visual model that divides the overall project deliverables into distinct work elements. So what is this uh, visual model? Visual model is, an, it is actually it is like an organization structure and order of information. So it is like an organization, it's an organization structure or, and order of information. Yes. Okay. So visual models, they have organization structure and order of information. It can help to complete the task, it can help to complete the project easier because actually you know it uh, main aim is to it actually is used to identify identify gaps missing and missing information so using this as a tool like uh, in the organization structure out of an out of information it helps to identify the gap and missing information which could have left without a notice this deliverables. Deliverables, you know, it is a report. It is a report or a document or a software. Software is used uh, to upgrade any building block in overall project. So they are, they are used to upgrade the, any barriers in the project. Okay. Then functions, it converts the project requirements into manageable tasks. So what are these project requirements? Project requirements like they are the conditions or tasks that must, that must be completed to ensure the success of uh, completion of the project. So they are the conditional tasks. Project requirements are the conditional tasks which should be completed to ensure success for the completion of the project. They provide a clear picture, very important. They provide a clear picture of work that needs to be done. So they provide a clear picture, clear picture. Okay. Then what is this man into the manageable task? Manageable task means the process of managing a task through the life cycle. Okay. So it involves like planning, yeah, testing, tracking reporting so all these things are manageable tasks which are done so that it you know like uh, it is used as a to update to up it is done to update to update uh, a project schedule yes. 
also it directs the team members it also helps in directing the team members to move the project forward to move the project forward okay then we have a, to translate the tasks into specific work packages for the team members so this is what then what is this work package work package yeah work package is the group of related tasks the other related task group of related tasks so group of related tasks the group of related tasks because they all the projects they look like because they look like um, like uh, what do you say main projects like work packages are they are actually they are smaller they are the smaller units they are the smallest unit of work they are the smallest unit of work they are the smallest unit of work that the project can be broken down for creating because you create the work breakdown structure to create the work breakdown structure and they, they are like uh, grouped into the areas like uh, geographical geographical okay then engineering then you have um, engineering discipline yeah then technology oriented technology then time so all these taken as a work packages yes then uh, we have to communicate this objective to the stakeholders who are these stakeholders stakeholders like uh, they can affect the organization actions or objective policies like they are the directors stakeholders no they are the main like creditors creditors they are the directors they are the employees even government agencies government agencies shareholders owners suppliers so all these are stakeholders then they form the foundation for planning so what is this foundation for planning they are termed uh, like for the, to manage the future work like what has to be done how has to be done what has to be done what is to be done how is to be done so it determines where the organization is going so it identifies where the organization is going yes very very important so these are the functions